Hi, I'm Mara Webster with In Creative Company, and today I'm thrilled to be talking about the fantastic short film Ripe with Tusk directing duo Olivia Mitchell and Carrie Furr, along with executive producer and very legendary soccer player Kelly O'Hara. Um, and for, for both of you, Olivia and Carrie, I wanted to start by just talking about the genesis of this short film, because you said that you're very location driven filmmakers and, you know, the genesis of this really came from spending time in Spain and going to some of the more rural areas. And I was interested in how just immersing yourself in that space and that that landscape really shaped not just the idea for the story of this, but really the overall feel of this film, because it feels so specific to that as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we we loved we love traveling and architecture and locations, like you were saying. And I think um, there's also something really interesting about this, like modern day romance, something that like couldn't happen back in this time period that a lot of these buildings were built. And so that juxtaposition between, um, you know, like a queer love story in these like really, really old towns, like the house we shot in was like a thousand years old. And so um, that was really fun for us to, you know, put together and see that story take place in a location like that. Yeah. And as far as the genesis goes, we were in rural Spain with the goal of not doing any work and decompressing and taking a break. Uh, and then we saw the beautiful 16th century streets and it was over for us. We were writing constantly. So yeah. We no, have no nothing makes work projects come up like not working. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's so true. It, it really is true. It's that mental game. And and for you, Kelly, you originally discovered this project through Luke Anderson, who was already pr producer on the film that you'd known from college and, and for a long time. And I was curious about when you first had conversations with Olivia and, and Carrie, what it was that you really saw in the specific vision and the idea of this story to really be stepping into a producer role for yourself. Yeah, I think um, our first conversation was when, you know, Carrie and Olivia, y'all gave myself and Cameron, um, the pitch and nothing had been shot yet, obviously. And, um, it was really Cameron who my, my partner in life and in business, who, when we closed the meeting, she looked at me and she was like, that's the best pitch I've ever been given. She's in, she's been in storytelling most of her life. And, um, she just felt like Carrie and Olivia had such a vision and knew exactly what they wanted and what they were going for. And, and it was a beautiful, it was, it was a beautiful pitch. It, you know, it was everything that the film turned out to be, honestly. Um, so yeah, they're, you know, just from a deck and, and hearing them talk about it, we were kind of hooked, obviously the story and, um, you know, the characters hit home for us and we wanted to be able to see those played out, but Carrie and Olivia blew us away and we were like, yeah, we, we gotta be a part of this. I also love that in in creating this short film that the two of you actually wrote a feature film script first. And then this was the idea of how do we create a self-sustaining story that can be a proof of concept for the feature, but also really stand alone. And I think there's such a challenge in making short films and making sure that you have a really fully fleshed out story and characters that feel completely lived in. And so how did you look at the the larger ideas that you created for a feature and really figure out how to tackle that? Yeah, yeah. That's a great question. I mean, we'd done this process before where we made a short that, you know, we had a TV idea for and it worked for us and we were able to sell it as a TV show. So that was sort of our first instinct. We're like, let's try and do that again. I think it, a lot of times people, when they look at words on a page, aren't able to see true, fully developed characters or, you know, the style. I think our style is a really like specific style that can't possibly come across in words on a page and so yeah we get feedback a lot that our characters are on the page are hard to read or <laughs> underdeveloped and, and we're yeah. like oh fuck you know we just got to make something and then when we make something people are like the characters are amazing. yeah and now in the future you know? script nobody ever says that because they've seen the short yeah it's funny but I think when it comes to like the story that we wanted to like pull from it we basically like took a section that kind of happens like two-thirds of the way through the feature and pulled it out and then moved some pieces around because we did want it to feel like it could be a short that stands alone and can play at festivals and that, you know, you wanted to see something more from the story, but you didn't have to see something more to understand the story. And I think to to chime there too, I mean, the reason we made a short is because no one's going to just fund our random lesbian feature film from two people who've never made a feature film before. And although Carrie and I have been working for 10 years as like music video and commercial directors, like we we do recognize that we need to prove ourselves and show people a little a smaller piece of our vision so they can really latch on and it was honestly something that you know although it creates an extra step in the process towards the future it really was fantastic because we got to 
basically treat it as a practice round and like work with new crew, figure out our processes in Spain, figure out, you know, what we like and what we want to bring back and, and certain styles and looks. And it's, I think it's going to make the feature that much better. Yeah. And I, I also think that one of the things that's really great in the way that you've told this story is by using the lens of soccer as part of the communication between these two characters and their emotions with each other, there's certain things that are communicated through sports and, and through those motions and movements. And so for all three of you, I wanted to ask about really using the lens of the sport so specifically for part of this burgeoning lesbian romance that's at the center of this really beautiful film. Kelly, you got to this one. Well, I mean, I, I know you know, what you guys wanted soccer to allow the characters to portray because, you know, Sophie is um, definitely more restrained and more introverted and being on the field allowed her to be, you know, more aggressive and show that side. So it was kind of this, it, the, the, you know, the, the soccer pitch allowed these characters to show a different side of themselves that they wouldn't do outside the lines. And I think that that's actually very applicable to like soccer in general. You'll have some players, like I feel like myself, like I step across those lines. I'm a very aggressive player, but like outside I am aggressive and I am competitive, but I also am like silly and fun and like, just want to have a good time and smile and laugh, you know? Um, so I think that that it's, it, I, I think it was a brilliant idea that they had to have soccer and being on the soccer field and, and playing the game be this way to show these different sides of the characters, but you guys know more. So you talk about it. No, no, yeah, no exactly, that's exactly it. Dated. And I think also when you're in another country where maybe you don't speak the language perfectly or at all, it's a game that you, you don't need language for it's, you know, the rules are the same everywhere. And so that was something we were really interested in, but most importantly is the character part that, that Kelly talked about. Cause it's just, it's fun to see, how people can change when they're in competition and um, the physicality of, and also like the closeness you have in soccer with other people. Um, yeah. The dynamics too. I mean, for Sophie and Gloria specifically, like they are, you know, both feeling this magnetism, neither of them really understands or can explain. And I think on the field that aggression might be laced with, you know, other tension that they need to figure out. So there's a lot of layers to, I think being on the field that, that helped tell our story. Yeah, and, and there's this kind of precipice between the two characters that comes from that collision point early in the story, um, which leads to the broken arm. And how did, did you did you all talk a lot about what you felt like the right move would be in that moment? Because you kind of have this really great fake out. And I know that, Kelly, you were really instrumental in, in the details of that coming together. Yeah, I mean, talk about how surreal it is to have Kelly O'Hara FaceTiming our actors, like from World <laughs> Cup training. Like, it's like the craziest yeah. <laughs> thing in the entire universe. Our actors are like, what? Like, I know it's crazy, but yeah, we, we all, the three of us work together on basically like a little fake out move. Um, I mean, I don't know. You guys can. Yeah. I think, it. I mean, there was two like move. There's the one where she, she like breaks her arm that we kind of changed a little bit in the edit, but the one that I know was even more was like midway through, there's a point where Sophie kind of like, like convinces Gloria she's like going for the ball and and pushes her back and lets it go past her and that one we worked out with Kelly and you know FaceTimed she wasn't able to be there because she was training but um FaceTimed on on the field with with our actors and she was watching monitor the whole time and I'll let Kelly speak to it as well well no I I liked the because the scene is it's post them at the party right yeah yeah mm -hmm. we're like Gloria makes a move and Sophie's like ah, I can't like involve engage and she and like Sophie almost feels like she got faked out at that party. And now, you know, back on the soccer field, she's able to be like, all right, you did that to me there. I'm going to do this to you here. Like exactly. two can play this game, you know? And um, I just, you know, I, I obviously, like they said, I was getting um, video sent to me and I was able to FaceTime while I was away from set because Cameron was there and they were obviously there. And to be able to just kind of be like, do this tiny little like arm movement because that kind of indicates of like you know you want the ball and I wouldn't do this but maybe just try this it was just little tweaks because you know they they obviously played soccer too so um but just being able to add where I could it was fun yeah 
I love that. And and Olivia and Carrie, one of the things that I love in the way that you've directed this with and, and a lot of the camera choices is very frequently in setups, we start with a wide shot to kind of establish the landscape or the scenery of a shot, and then we punch in. But um, I know that kind of early on in production, you, you flipped that on its head and would start on a close up of something and then gradually pull out. And I was very curious about just that first time that you did it and what really clicked and, and how that very quickly became part of the language of the entire film for you both. That was yeah, fair. yeah. We actually discovered that in pre-production with our DP Pablo because we were we just felt like um, we wanted the film to feel really intimate and close. And there's something just so traditional about wide shots that we're like, why are like you know you 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 you're told like you should establish with a wide and then but we were really questioning that and we're like but why like what is the purpose of this because you know we had a small budget we were really limited with time and resources and so we needed to make sure every shot like had a purpose to it and so we kind of broke that down and we're like we don't need to see this wide first it doesn't do anything for the story like it's actually so much better I think we discovered it the first time when she's like in the grocery store with the peach where we were like it'd be so cool if we start with this like we kind of wanted it to feel like a painting, like the shot of the peaches, like almost like these, you know, impressionist, like Sp Pablo actually pulled a lot of like Spanish impressionist paintings that like a lot of times had fruit, like cornucopias in them. It's like kind of a, it's kind of a um, symbol that is used a lot. And so we, we wanted to pull from like this idea of having this like perfect painting where she's like touching the peaches and it feels, and even the lighting was a little bit heightened. And then like once Gloria comes in, it's like broken out and we come into real life. And that's when we open up wide. And that's when like, you know, Sophie's in her head in a moment and we sort of use those close ups to show like we're inside of this like world and this headspace of her. And then we come out wide when we're broken out of it. Yeah. And there's definitely like a, a theme we explore of like Sophie's distance with herself and with others, you know, where, where is she in her head versus where is she feeling really far away? Um, you know, like even, you know, to juxtapose the hand shot, the shot in the town that's super wide and just stays wide. I think Sophie's just struggling to close a gap there and struggling to get close with somebody. And it's yeah, okay, when they're walking and like, it's just on a tripod and they kind of like get off the frame a little bit, but we didn't adjust because it just, it feels so rigid and like they aren't moving and the camera shouldn't move either. Um, so yeah, we played a lot with tricks like that of things that maybe would break rules or are not seen as like cla as classical um yeah from the beginning going into shooting I remember you and Pablo we were, we were all just like there will be no rules yeah like, we, we, we were inspired by impressionism because it's like the only yeah. rule is that there should be emotion that yeah, whatever gives emotion it. is what you go with and even so, if it's out of focus or we fuck up a shot like if that if that's the feeling and the core right it's more core than head I yeah. think for us when we do it yeah. and so we found that these close-up tactiles just gave us more emotion than like a wide shot necessarily I feel like also when you when you were talking about moments where Sophie's a little bit more in her head, I think one of the one of the really connective threads that feels so realistic for these characters is they're just having these surges of emotions and they don't necessarily know how to process or how to express themselves in a lot of ways. And it comes out in a playfulness, in a sense of humor, in pushing people away, in aggression and all these different spaces. And I wanted to ask all three of you about really conceptualizing and telling this story in a way that it's all about what's going on inside of these characters less than the dialogue that they're saying because they're never actually talking about their feelings in a direct manner. Yeah, if anything, they're lying about their feelings. They're actively <laughs> saying something opposite of what their feelings are. Um, yeah, I mean... We, we Yeah, you're a big stalwart for realism in that people never say what they really mean. It's so, it's so hard, rare. especially at that age. You haven't learned how to yet. It's such a yeah. raw vulnerability. I feel like I feel like whenever you have a crush, like that's what happens. You're not actually engaging in communication with that crush. It's all internal of what's going on in your head. Like, do they like me? Do I like them? Like, what is this? What did that mean? And there's no actual working it out between the two of you. It's just you in your head about it. And I think that they captured that so beautifully. And that's why I love this film because I just, I just feel like it, it captures the emotion of this, of a teenage crush and of like not knowing what's going on, what's happening, what is going to happen. And I feel like that is what a crush feels like. Yeah. So true. Oh my God. Was that a big part of what kind of drew you into wanting to come on board to this project and really just seeing how they'd created that on the page and the way that they were describing it? Yeah, I mean, I think I probably didn't understand or realize how well it was going to come out or how well it was going to be portrayed, you know, when we first got started. For me, it was more so the story of Sophie figuring herself out or just coming coming to the realization like, oh, I I, I like this person more than just a friend. And I think that 
I wish I would have had that when I was a teenager and been able to see that. So for me, it was, that was really the, the, um, driving home point of why I wanted to be involved in this. Cause I think it's a beautiful story. I think that people are going to really resonate with it, have already resonated with it, obviously now that they've seen it. Um, so yeah, that's, that's why I wanted to be part of it. I love that. Um, you know, and, and going back to the the directing as well, you were talking about some of the the test shots that you were doing early on with Pablo before filming. Um, but I know that some of those shots ended up in the final version of the film. And so just wanted to ask about how, that space where you had your cast and you were just playing around with different lenses and different potential looks and the way that that ultimately found its way into the film as well. Yeah, a lot of our lens tests came in. It was really fun because we were in Barcelona doing prep for a couple of weeks and then we moved to like south of barcelona where we shot like an hour away and it was just a small portion of our crew that went it was like us um our producer cookie pablo and our two actors and we just lived in the house for the weekend before the whole rest of the crew came down and we got the camera and we were just playing around and shooting stuff and um i think like it was also really interesting because rita who um plays gloria it was her first time ever in front of a camera she'd never acted before she was um kind of warming up to it and so we were just you know, exploring that. And she was immediately like amazing in front like, of the camera. And yeah, that one time, that one day at the pool where they're just, it's in the Where credit. they're sitting next to each other and they're like on the thing and they're staring at the camera. That blew it. Us, Carrie and Pablo like cried. We were like, this is, this is cinema. Yeah. yeah. You know, cause they were just so real and raw and like. And we'd been rehearsing uh-huh. like a week prior to that with both of them. So like they were in character and they, you know, we had talked a lot and we had rehearsed a lot of scenes a lot so they we they, they knew their dynamic yeah, they were point. simmering over they were ready to just be and that shot in the credits to us was just like oh my god yeah this week's gonna be so and there's amazing there's another fun shot too that's in the opening um where uh you can see a let you can see a filter go in to the camera i think it's on it's on gloria and she's like looking at sophie in the yeah, pool she's laying on her towel on her, on her bikini like sticks her tongue out you can yeah. hear the click of yeah the- the lens or the filter changing and that was like literally us deciding are we going to do like a full black promise or no black promise and like there's something really fun about seeing it go in it's almost like you go into this dreamland with that filter and um yeah we ended up one of our editors actually um we had a lot of editors on it we didn't have you know we were kind of passing around because we just had people do as much as they could on it and then we give it to the next person one of our editors manny um he we kind of developed that and put that shot in and it was so cool when we saw it we it hadn't thought crazy. about we, it like we kind that of reconstructed the intro with more well you know i mean kelly and cameron were there this whole process too we used to have a very different intro to this film that wasn't so we didn't have this whole montage in the beginning and the voicemail it was more everything. just the breaking of the arm was in the beginning it was it was much carrie and i we we air on minimalism with the storytelling and sometimes it's too much and people are like what's going on yeah so we kind of you know we talked to their team we're like we got to figure out how to make just set a little bit more exposition and, and make it a little bit clearer in the beginning and and we had all a lot all this footage from the test the the test days and so Manuel came in and kind of like figured out a storyline in there that worked and yeah, then we recorded incredible. some voice memos so it, it ended up really coming in handy and it was it was it was fun to play with and you were mentioning that shot where you had the filter that you were kind of clicking in that ends up in the film, um, but you really used a filter for a lot of this. And um, I wanted to to ask about some of the conversations that you then had with your colorist, Caitlin Battistelli, where she was like, usually people use this for like a few scenes, but not the entire movie. And then oh, really yeah. finding a lot of how that looked in the color grading process. Yeah, yeah we were, it was a bold move. People were calling us crazy the whole time. Yeah, she was like, <laughs> I'm terrified by this footage because it was blooming so much. And I think in color and like what we were doing with our test stuff was like, you know, we were messing around with like pushing the filters far in in camera and then in color sort of like pulling down what we didn't want and keeping in what we did. And Pablo's an amazing um, colorist as well and was able to sort of like test that out ahead of time. And so we were able to set a look kind of with him. But then when we sent it over to color and to Caitlin, she was like, it, it, I think that the raw footage is like way bloomier and she was able to, and like kind of the goal with the, with it is to like keep the highlights bloomy, which is like to us partly a, a trying to emulate film. We shot completely digitally and we're, we love emulating film and um, wanting to keep that bloom in the highlights, but not so that the whole thing's soft. Cause we still like it to have this contrast. So it's not like, 
you know, overly soft and, and light, but still has like a thickness to the contrast and still feels like deep and Hard rich. Lines, yeah. Um, so she was able to kind of like pull down the contrast in like our, in like our darker areas, but keep it in the bright areas. And, but yeah, it was a, we, we kept being like, keep going, keep going, keep going, especially in the end the like, there's this, the, the scene with like this beautiful sunset and, um, we just kept being like, go further, go further. And I think colorists sometimes get scared and, 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 and sometimes it can go horribly wrong. Like I know rightfully yeah, so why they're from scared. A good place. Yeah. Like, you don't want to push yeah. so far that it's like tacky, and but you yeah. Break the system. And we kept pulling up like paintings. We use paintings a lot for our references. Like we were really inspired by this, this artist, um, Kirshner who we have his paintings in our house and he has the most beautiful sunsets and we kept pulling those up and she was kind of pulling from that as well so that we could kind of keep it tempered but still like make it feel you know larger than life but once we got that sunset scene it's Caitlin was jumping up and down when yeah, we, we were like, okay, like so cool actually and we were all like <laughs> and then we walked outside and the, the sky actually like looked like what we yeah. had it was a crazy moment we, we were inside this like dark color room and we walked outside and somehow the sky was this like beautiful really saturated sunset that was just it felt like right in that moment yeah and and kelly when they when they were talking about how you know originally the beginning was a little bit different you know in in stepping into a foray as a producer and coming into it with the lens of really understanding storytelling but getting to have this real nitty-gritty experience throughout the process and just seeing the way that it develops during pre-production it becomes something else during production and then as it goes through post-production it's something different i just wanted to ask a little bit about your experience and some of the things that you feel like you really learned throughout this process especially because you're a part of shepherding this into being a feature as well yeah for sure well I think it, it just taught me like these two are insanely talented and are able to take this idea in their head put it onto paper a deck write a script you know basically sell it to us to get us on board and then to actually execute and deliver on literally like I, I can't tell you how perfect it went from their explanation of it our first meeting to then the final edit like it I was like this is you know this is it we 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 nailed this they nailed this um but I I'm definitely a rookie in the space I was like I just am here to learn and um was excited to be a part of it and to like give whatever I could but then also take in whatever um I could as well and I think it also showed me like coming from the sports world the value of a good team like if you have good people working on something team is everything and it's in the in the movie world um that is also the case so it was cool to see that similarity between sports and now like the entertainment industry um and then also just like the value of a of the editing process and like going through it and and getting to a place that we felt really good because like they said the first edit we were kind of like I don't know if I can send this to somebody without explaining like what is going on in this moment but that's what's so cool about like they had everything they needed they just had to put it together in the right way and I, when we saw the final edit Cameron and I were like this is amazing like you know losing our minds over it so um it was a it was just a really fun process to go through yeah, yeah it was cool and, and, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, go um, ahead. I was gonna say that that moment when we sent this final edit because the beginning was so different and we were really nervous because we were like we feel it's working really well and the team around us that's been like editing with us feels like it's working really well but you're still so nervous we're always nervous as filmmakers like we never really know and I like know. I was gonna say when Kelly was saying that like you know Kelly at times could see things before we saw them like Kelly has such a clear sense of honestly like truth and authenticity like it's it's really wonderful like and and sometimes when we were like having breakdowns about this film sucks. You know, Kelly's like, this is amazing. Like, this is so good. No, it was like, validating. Keep going, keep going. And we're new film. You know, we're like, it, it's hard. It's it's hard getting through the trenches of the edit. I mean, we spent six months in the edit and I'm But just that final one, like the validation of, you know, like a teammate being like, this is great. Just it, it made us go from nervous to like really proud and I think, you know, it, it, the, the thing about teammate teamwork is is huge in this process. You're kind of relying on your team the whole time. It's so, it's so, so important. Yeah. 
Kelly's the best. I also love that mention of, of it feeling very truthful and very authentic because it does. And at the same time, I feel like this story recognizes that you have these two characters discovering their sexuality, but no two people ever have the same experience with this. It's always very different for every person, but it almost feels like the story feels universally connected and accessible because it's telling a story that's so specific. And so for all three of you, how did you find that telling a more specific story actually allowed you to really approach this broader concept and idea at the same time? Time. yeah well question. it's interesting because when kelly was talking earlier about the crush thing i sort of think that whether it's straight or or yeah. queer crush it's always the same and i think that that like <laughs> it's like no matter what you you are so scared to tell your thoughts and sometimes you're confused by them and like i think that that in itself allows this queer story to like feel universal because everybody knows what it's like to not want to say what you're actually feeling or thinking. Um, and I think that in this, like, we were just really inspired by this idea of like a fish out of water and somebody who feels like they don't belong and are trying to like, it's like maybe one of the hardest situations to discover, to discover your sexuality in, in this world, but also freeing in a way because they do feel like she, Sophie feels like she can be a new person and somebody um, where she can test some things out and maybe like be away from, where she feels like she's held back in her hometown possibly. And how did you set about coming up with, with that final moment? Because even when Sophie finally, finally runs after her, there is still that brief moment of pushing away and then coming back at the end, which again, I think just speaks so much to the chemistry and the dynamic that you've set up the rest of the story. Yeah. That also didn't used to be that way. It's funny. We kind of changed the end in the writing stages and the beginning in the edit stages. But yeah, the end, um, I don't know. Yeah, it didn't used to be a happy ending. And then we were kind of like, it It just ended with Henry showing up. And we were like, we, you know, it didn't feel representative, first of all, of the feature length film. And, it, you know, it felt like we, it felt like a different, a different project than the feature length film with, with, with a, you know, sadder or a more confusing ending. And so we... We didn't want to see that. <laughs> yeah, we just wanted something like happier and something more um, epic. And like, I think, you know, we kept going back and forth too with it. We're like, is this really, is this, especially in the edit when we we're looking at it, we're like, is this actually happening? Is this, is this scene actually happening? Or is she thinking and wishing she could do this? And either way, like whatever you take from it, like it still ends in, in a happy ending because she's either like imagining it and then maybe going to go do it or is doing it. And so we kind of wanted to leave it a little open-ended as to like what is truly happening in this moment. Cause it does feel like the end of a rom-com in some ways where you like chase after the person to the airport. And like, um, we were a little averse to that at first. Cause we we're like, Oh no, is yeah. this cheesy. Like, but then know, we were just but... like, we just leaned into it and it's, yeah, people have liked it. And it, I think it, it really speaks to the, the lack of joyful queer stories, you know, like I, if, I think if it were, a straight story, I maybe would have treated it a little bit differently. Um, but because I think of our own personal experience too, I mean, this project is essentially led by two queer woman couples who have had extended coming out experiences and, and being able to close the gap and show that these people chose one another was an important thing we wanted to put in the world. We love love. <laughs> <laughs> I do. And, and Kelly, for you, you know, you came on board this particular project, but you've also started a production company since then as well. And um, I, I love that you also very much see your path forward, still being very connected to US women's soccer in, in various facets. And just wanted to ask a little bit about the way that you see those two worlds combining, because it feels like this was kind of the perfect first project for you. And is is that something that you're kind of like looking for specifically, like stories that are touching on sports or just a really broad spectrum of the idea of stories that you might want to tell in the world? Yeah, I don't think we're going to necessarily pigeonhole ourselves to sports. Obviously, like I know sports, so does Cameron. Um, but we just want to tell good stories and stories that we want to see played out. And ones that, like I said, I wish I would have had this as a teenager. I'm now glad I have it as a 36 year old. Like, I think it's still beautiful and I love watching it. And I'm so excited to see it become a feature because I just think it's going to impact and resonate with so many people. Um, but yeah, I, we're, we're in the, in the very uh, baby steps of our production company and just figuring out what we want to do, but um, we want to tell good stories and, um I, I have been able to see the impact of storytelling on my on my own life and out in the world. So um want to contribute to that. Yeah, it's so wonderful. It's it's such a beautiful short film and, and I love everything that it is by itself and look forward to seeing the continued journey into it becoming a feature as well. So congratulations and thank you so much to all three of you.
Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate Thank the questions. Yeah, great questions, by the way. Great yeah. interview. Incredible.